South Africa became an international accepted democracy in 1994 when Nelson Mandela, once the most famous political prisoner in the world, was inaugurated as the first black president of South Africa on 10 May 1994. This in effect brought an end to the apartheid era. The new democratic order also brought about many other changes in the country and had a substantial impact on policing and law enforcement. Sidney Mufamadi was appointed the first Minister for Safety and Security in the New South Africa, deputized by Minister Joe Matthews. Nelson Mandela's inauguration was hailed as one of the most fundamental and significant changes in the history of our country. Since then, change became one of the most frequently used words in all spheres of the South African community, including policing. The then South African police force, probably the biggest and oldest of the 11 police agencies in the country, seemed to be the organization most affected by the change. Old flags and banners were paraded for the last time making place for the new. What seemed to be an abstract concept became reality when the president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, announced the new National Commissioner of the South African Police Service, Commissioner George Fivers. It is my pleasure to announce the appointment of General George Fivers as National Commissioner of the new South African Police Service. Soon after his appointment, Commissioner Fivers spelled out his views on change and the necessity to break with the past. The legitimacy and acceptability of the South African Police Service must be addressed and the South African Police Service must make a clean and definite break with the past. It must be borne in mind that before 1994, South Africa was divided into the so-called TBVC, Transkei, Buputatswana, Venda and Siskai states, self-governing territories and development regions. The TBVC states had independent status but were not widely recognized by the international community. They were also referred to as homelands or bandustans. Every homeland had its own policing agency, bringing the total number of policing agencies in the country to 11, derived from the 10 homelands and the South African police force. On the 29th of January 1995, Commissioner George Favas had the responsibility to first and foremost amalgamate these 11 policing agencies into a single united South African police service. The next step was to align the new police service with the new legislation and the process of transformation in South Africa. To effect this change, he convened a meeting in July 1995 with representatives from all over the country, including all ranks, races and gender. At this gathering, more than 70 police officers representing all rank levels were introduced to the newly appointed deputy commissioners and divisional commissioners in Pretoria. The occasion was an audience participation panel discussion on the effects of change in the South African police service and what it meant to each and every member. John Kualani, the then editor of Tribute magazine and a renowned journalist, facilitated the discussion. We are going to talk about you and change in the SAPS. I'm an outsider. As an outsider, I will immediately say to you, I believe there is change taking place in the SAPS. And the only reason I'm saying so is because in the past, if I had to be among so many policemen, you certainly knew I was in trouble. If I had so many policemen around me, I was answering questions. Today, I'm asking those questions. This was the beginning of good things to come. The once feared police force would now be transformed into a police service with a mandate and responsibility to render a real service delivery to all citizens, inhabitants in South Africa. Looking back at this amazing transformation, you must attribute the roots of its existence to the far-reaching and deliberate vision and mission of our world icon, Nelson Mandela. Under his leadership, a new dawn has broken and the sun now shines on all of us. We would also like to pay tribute to our security forces in all their ranks for the distinguished role they have played in securing our first democratic election and the transition to democracy 
from bloodthirsty forces which still refuse to see the light. We succeeded to take our last steps to freedom in conditions of relative peace.